90.3 WMC Upper Montclair. This is JT Untamed Bethia. And I'm Jared Tauber, DJ, Dr. DJ. And calling into our studios all the way from across the country, international musical icons, Big Time Rush. Welcome to WMSC, guys. Welcome. Hey, welcome. what's so going much. on? Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm right. also curious about that doctor. DJ, Dr. DJ? I, I got it at the uh, School of Funkology. Okay. <laughs> I like it. And did you, like was that a master's program or a doctorate program? That... Uh, it was actually a BFA, a Bachelor of the well, Fine Arts. Okay, but it should have been doctorate because you're Dr. D- DJ, Dr. DJ. Come on, Jay. I know, the, the rules work differently there, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's jump right into it, man. Um, First thing, uh, with the success of the Forever Tour last summer, um, what about that did you guys have in mind coming into this summer's tour with the Can't Get Enough Tour? Well, the title says it all, which is why we're going back on the road. We couldn't get enough of playing, couldn't get enough of the fans. And it seems like they couldn't get enough of our shows because most of them sold out. So we knew that there were fans that wanted to see us that couldn't. So we said, hey, we're going to take everything that works, playing a lot of the hits. Of course, we're going to play some new music off the album. And we're going to improve upon the stage, the lighting, the energy. So it's going to be a show, but elevated. If you can believe it or not, it's going to be bigger and better. Throwing it back to big time movie. All right. Set the scene. You're filming in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and you're staying at the Empress Hotel. Is it true that you tried to contact spirits with a Ouija board and that in a state of terror, Carlos made everyone evacuate the premises? That is is true. We did. It is true. uh, Did a little Ouija board. Um, And it was. It was actually, it was very creepy. There's lots of um, ghost stories that go along in that in that spot. Um, so yes, we did actually have to transfer because of Carlos. (laughs) It was not the most comfortable hotel to be in because it certainly did have that haunted feel it was a beautiful hotel don't get me wrong um but it just it was creepy it had a vibe it had a vibe send my love to carlos by the way it was also october we will it was also october and i believe actually we had halloween (laughs) um while we were staying at that hotel so it was definitely one of those creepy witchy times wait so you guys stayed in a creepy hotel played one of the creepiest board games known to man and it actually worked yeah it, it worked it enough terrible. for us to want to move out of that hotel yeah. bit of a <laughs> shot in the dark moment honestly uh, wow okay jared you're really just coming in with a line today buddy <laughs> we were down to stay at the hotel but they said no y'all got to be in one place together or not so we moved and it actually worked pretty dope hotel so you know things happen for a reason there's the hope in the hotel we stayed in after was a lot nicer. Um, yeah. Bringing it back to the tours, um, I went to the Forever Tour last year. I was in your Atlantic City show, and my girlfriend and I, we were all the way in the back. And the one thing that we both noticed is you guys had these bits in between a lot of your songs, and it reminded us a lot of the Big Time Rush show. Um, is there anything you could give us as to whether we can expect more of that and you can't get enough tour? Well, I, let me just say that touring is one of our absolute favorite things to do. And we really try to make the live experience just as, as special as you could possibly be. So if you were in the very back, you at least got to see us up close and personal because we travel all the way to the back of the of the shows. I remember that. That was my favorite part. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we're, we're trying to do um, something different and special for this one and have some different moments. But um, yeah, you can expect a little bit more of that. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is the bits are just um, uh, a matter of our personalities. You know, um, <clears throat> we're not definitely not trying to make it reminiscent of the TV show. It's just that the four of us together, I mean, we like joking around. And I think it's one of the things that we've always had, um, whether we intentionally did it or not, we've always had in our concerts that was, you know, four uh, best friends who were on stage having a good time. And um a lot of that is just yeah being funny for the sake of being funny you know it's not it's less a bit and more uh that's just kind of what we do you know yeah we we just try to have a good time i saw you guys at uh madison square garden and i did feel like i was in a big time rush episode it was pretty cool dope yeah it's crazy i mean it certainly feels like a finale episode yeah of our our tv show uh so i know that both James and Carlos have extensive musical theater backgrounds. James, for instance, was Danny Zuko in Greece, Marius in Les Mis, and also a finalist in the Project Center Stage competition. Carlos was in Little Shop of Horrors, Once Upon a Mattress, and of course, Kinnicky in Greece Live. As a theater kid myself, I'd like to know which aspects of performing in high school productions like Man of La Mancha and Titanic apply to playing sold-out amphitheaters and arenas. One thing I've always given theater credit for 
um, is it prepares you on like any other medium of entertainment because there's no second takes. There's no, oh, let's stop the song and go back. There's no, you're filming, oh, I want to do another take. You've got to keep going. You've got to be able to improv. You've got to be able to get Mark back to your feet. So um, I appreciate all the training. It, it really prepped me for the career I'm doing now because it, it just taught me that no matter what, you keep going, you might get something out of it. And especially for playing live now, things don't always go perfect. We try our best to create a very tight show, but sometimes the best shows are the most imperfect ones. We have to think on your feet. And you've got to pivot. Sometimes the most fun comes out of that. So a lot of that training came from theater. So there's an air of improv to to performing on stage at, on the tour. Of course. 100%. Of course. Jared, you were in Titanic? No, I, I, I wasn't in. But I know uh, I know Carlos did a uh, production of Titanic back in. Well, that applies because, you know, we'll never let go and your heart will go on. <laughs> yeah. I, I was in Greece though. So so James, Carlos, and I were we all did Greece. I, I, I was in the ensemble though. I think everybody at the station, almost everybody does have a big musical theater background. Um, nice. Montclair State. Um the area of Montclair is very artsy. Almost everybody's a performer, actor theater. So um that is great for like everybody to keep in mind, no matter what you do, whether it's singing, rapping, dancing, acting, performing on stage, um, it all comes full circle and you guys going from Marius and Lee Miz to selling out Madison Square Garden, huge inspiration to all of our listeners. Um, so I want to thank you guys for that too. Of course. Moving on, uh, your return to the music scene back in 2021 was iconic. You guys hit the ground stomping with your singles called Like I See It, Honey. Um, my question for you is, was there always a plan to do a full album or were you guys waiting on the responses from these singles? Uh, typically, singles are an easy way to... <clears throat> sorry, I was just going to say well, I was singles. Just, I... Oh. <laughs> fight, 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 fight. <laughs> singles are an easy way to get it started we always had plans to do an album though but i think not until you actually release a few singles do you kind of find your your musical preference and kind of like the vision for the record and i think because we had recorded so many songs that we loved that an album really started to take shape kendall what were you gonna say (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna say i was gonna say uh that you know when you're getting the band started there isn't a lot of time i mean you're trying to put together a a tour you're trying to put out songs um you know so putting out singles was just uh, a more matter of timing and yes the intention was always to do a record uh we just needed time to finish it you know to put it all together and in order to get 10 songs on an album you have to write like 40 or 50 songs you know to be able to whittle them down so um, there is a lot of music that we ended up writing um, in order to get to these songs. So it's, yeah, really, it's just a matter of time. So you guys have been working on that from even before the reunion, working on it. For sure. From before we even announced that we were back, we had been working on music, yes. Wow, that is, that's about three years working on this album. Right. Even more so. Yeah, if you really think about it, yeah. Do you have like a ballpark estimate on how many unreleased BTR songs there are in the vault? Oh, I mean, so many. Well, there's various stages of them, right? Ideas. I mean, if you're counting the Zoom sessions we had during COVID. I mean, there's a thousand tiny, a thousand tiny ideas, um, but there's probably 40-ish, 50% uh, or over finished songs, maybe 40 or 50, maybe more. I think there's more than that, but that's yeah. just in these last ones. But no, but I mean, like also back in the day, if you include all the ones for the other albums that didn't make it, hundreds, hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. James, you um, you posted your phone number in 2017 to promote iHeartRadio's <laughs> Rising Star Challenge. I texted you a, a click hole meme, and you responded to me saying that it was amusing. Is that still your number, or have you changed it since? If I text you right uh, now, are you going to get a notification? No. If you change it, can you drop it in this interview? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, it was a cool thing I did. I definitely had to have another phone number, uh, a more private phone number. <laughs> but it was cool to uh, utilize that for a while and get to respond to people directly. Wait, what did you text him, Jared? Okay, I'll, I'll show you right now. It wasn't his phone number. It was a promotional thing. But So it, it says... It looks like uh, it's John like a, Travolta. A, yes, it's a fake quote from John Travolta that says, I scream the entire time I'm on an airplane. From takeoff to landing, I'm howling like a banshee. John Travolta on his love of flying. <laughs> That's amusing to me. Yeah, that is amusing. That's why I said it's amusing. I love it. <laughs> 
<laughs> to this day, six years later, he is still amused. I just, I amuse for years. No, it's funny. You send that in the responses. Ha ha. That is amusing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I am definitely not a robot. I am definitely James Maslow talking to you on this fake phone number. Let me just say that AI has certainly improved since then <laughs> all right guys one more really big question because jerry and i are a little curious um in doing our research um you guys started your own label after you returned in 2021 bought the rights um have you guys ever discussed amongst yourself any idea of you signing any other artists to it or is that just your personal label for your music yeah that was the personal label for the music you know it's not that deep um it was something we thought was clever and it was a joke we'll, we always used to have um, and so that's, that's why it is that, uh, honestly, when we created it, I did not, I don't think we considered the fact that it would be on Spotify, mm. like that it would show on Spotify. It was just more of an inside joke. Um, uh, but Hey, uh, it worked out. And I think if we were going to sign other artists, we would probably just do a different project. We would probably have some other thing that we would work on together. We'd create some other ma like management company or something. But, you know, we have over the years very nonchalantly talked about like, you know, we could team up and use our skills to like, you know, promote somebody else. So it's something that very passively we discussed, but um, yeah, we'd probably just do it in some other way. All right. Thank you guys uh, so much. Um, looking forward to your tour. Um, definitely looking forward to another life. Um, you guys have been tuned into 90.3 WBC Upper Montclair. Um, tell us where would you be able to tell us where we can catch you guys in the New Jersey area um, for tours? Yes, well, we're playing Homedell, New Jersey. Your 10 year, 10 year return because you, uh, you haven't played it since the summer break tour, July 13th, 2014 or 2013. What was it called? Was it called PNC Bank back then as well? Yeah, PNC Bank Art Center. I, I think it was. Think. Yeah, no, we're playing the same place. But we're so excited to be playing there again. I can't believe it's been 10 years. Uh, I promise you guys, if you saw that show, the show is going to be even bigger and better. Jared, you're going to that one, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is funny because that's uh, June 30th. It's the same day that you played the Garden. So I saw you guys June 30th last year. You're going to see you guys June 30th this year. Hey, it's a good time. The text between James and I was also on June 30th, 2017. June 30th <laughs> is my big time rush day. That's wild. Oh, my God, dude. You got like, dates down. I love it. Jared, we're going to promise you, you're going to be very amused. Yeah, you will be amused. Uh, I, I, I can count on you for that. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you all on tour. See you this summer.